What's up guys? Today I'm going to teach you the advanced poker strategy worth millions. Let's jump right into it. All right, so what is the advanced poker strategy that I wish I had learned when I was just starting out poker, which would have helped me make millions a lot faster? This is the advanced flop floating strategy that I finally figured out later on in my poker career. And I'm gonna explain it all to you in today's video, step by step, which includes several hand history examples to help illustrate this all better for you. All right, so before we get started here, let's just define what the flop is and what floating the flop is. The flop, for those of you guys who are just starting out in the game, is the first betting round, the first post-flop betting round, I should say, when there's three community cards in the middle. And so floating in this situation is when you are in position, meaning that you are last to act, somebody has made a bet, and we are going to call now in order to take the pot away on later streets, either the turn or river. And that is very, very crucial because we're gonna talk about that in a sec. We need to always understand, guys, that the entire point of a flop float is to take away the pot later on in the hand. This is where a lot of people get tripped up. But anyways, let's jump right into today's hand history example. So a tag Titan aggressive player raises in middle position. And we're gonna assume this is like a six max cash game with 100 big blinds starting stacks. And we have a nice suited connector, nine, eight of diamonds on the buttons. So what should we be doing in a spot like this? Well, I would say typically I'd just be calling in a spot like this. You know, when this tag player raises in middle position, you know, this is a tight player. So they're gonna have a reasonably wide range here. They're gonna be playing a lot of strong ace hands like ace king, ace queen, ace jack, maybe an ace 10 suited. You can have a bunch of broadways like a king queen, king jack, and probably a bunch of pocket pairs as well. So a fairly strong range. They're not screwing around. So, you know, if we were to three bet light here, we certainly, we don't have a great hand. So it would be what we call a light three bet. I'm not sure if there's a huge amount of value to be gained by doing that. I think we're on the button here. We have direct position on this player after the flop. It's a great spot to just flat call and go see a cheap flop. Also, if you guys have read any of my books, especially my latest one, the Micro Stakes Playbook, you'll know that I use a dynamic pre-flop strategy. So I'm often looking in this situation for who is seated to the left of me in the blinds. This is extremely important, guys. If there's a recreational player in particular sitting in the blinds, this is a spot where you definitely wanna be just flat calling instead of raising because you want to allow them to get in the hand. Remember, we're on the button, so we're gonna have direct position after the flop on anybody in the blinds who decides to play as well. Now, I should mention, I don't normally fold this hand pre-flop here. I think that we need to be playing some hands if we wanna win at poker, and folding pre-flop is not how we win, so we do indeed call. Let's go to the flop. Flop comes down with a 10-10-5 rainbow. When I say rainbow, I mean three different suits, spades, hearts, and diamonds on this flop here. So the tag makes his continuation bet. Continuation bet is just them continuing on with their aggression now on the flop, and we have a decision to make. I think that we should be flat calling, aka floating here the vast majority of the time. Now, a mistake that a lot of people make here is just folding straight away here right now. After all, I mean, a lot of people look at this board and say, wow, 10, 10, 5. I mean, we don't have anything. We've got nine high. Why would we call here or do anything else? And before I move further, I should say that I do also discount raising here. I don't think raising is actually a very good strategy on this board because we're not really representing anything. And I think smart player is just going to, you know, read us like a book there and, and call a raise. But I do think that folding is a bad play also because we actually do have a lot of hidden equity on this board. I think I've made some videos before on the channel here talking about this, how to read board textures like this better. For example, on this board here, we have a backdoor flush draw. If it came diamond, diamond on the turn and river, we would make a diamond flush. Also, we have a backdoor straight draw here. If it came, for example, with a uh, seven and a jack on the turn and river, we would also make a straight here. Also, we have two live cards, nine and an eight. Guys, we need to always remember with a tight and aggressive player like this, they're going to be betting the flop here with many hands that actually did not connect with this board. For example, ace king, ace queen, ace jack. So therefore, while we are behind those hands right now, 
R2 cards 9 and 8 are live. What I mean when I say live is that if we were to catch one of those cards on the Turner River, it would make us the best hand in the situation because our opponent just has ace high. So for all of these reasons, we decide to float the flop here and let's go see the turn. Turn comes with a seven of spades. Not a bad card for us. So the tag player checks and what should we be doing in this situation? Well, guys, this is the whole point of a flop floating strategy. We should absolutely be betting on this board here to take the pot away. This is one of the most profitable plays that I've used in recent years, as I also talked about in my latest book the micro stakes playbook this play works amazingly well especially in small stakes games specifically versus players just like this tight and aggressive players they often give up on the turn if they have again a hand like ace king or ace queen they'll often wave the white flag here check we can just make a small bet and take it down there's two other things to note here number one we have plenty of equity we just picked up an open-ended straight draw hopefully you guys notice this on the turn here we can now catch any six or jack on the river in order to make the best hand. We also likely still have live outs with our nine or an eight. And the other thing is they're probably just going to fold most of the time when we make our bet here. And remember, like we said off the top, guys, the entire point of a flop floating strategy is that when they check to us on the turn or river, we're going to take a stab at it. We're not going to just check behind here because they've literally opened up the door for us here. They've given up control of the pot and we want to take it back here now again that's the entire point of a flop floating strategy where a lot of people get confused now let's shift gears here because a lot of people will say to me though uh, Nathan what do you do though when they bet the turn so let's talk about that right now as well all right so sometimes you know they're gonna bet the turn of course that's called a double barrel so what should we be doing in a spot like that should we just give up remember we don't actually have anything right now we've still only got nine high no we should call in this spot because we can also use a double floating strategy. Again, something I've talked about in these videos and in all of my books as well. Once again, we have lots of equity on this board, guys. We can catch any six or jack on the river to make a straight. We also likely have two live cards with a nine and eight because we need to remember that a lot of tags these days will double barrel with a hand like ace, king, ace, queen, ace, jack on boards like this because they know it's difficult for us to have hit this board. It could also be barrel here with two spades and so on and so forth we expect an aggressive player here to be barreling the turn with a lot of hands that are not paired currently now the beautiful thing is is that most players these days will not throw in the triple barrel bluff if they still don't have anything on the river for example the river comes with the three of clubs most of the time with their ace king their ace queen ace jack hands like that they're just gonna check they're finally gonna give up now and again we can make a small bet and take it down. We're gonna bluff at the pot. Assuming we don't hit one of our gin cards on the river, our six, our jack, our nine, or an eight, we are going to bluff at this board if they check to us on the rivers. So what you guys can hopefully see here is that we are creating with this strategy ways for us to take this pot away, to use the power of position in poker at all stages of the hand. That is why this strategy is so unbelievably effective, honestly, in small stakes, mid stakes, high stakes, whether you play cash games or tournaments. So if you guys found this video helpful, like and subscribe. Also grab a copy of my free poker cheat sheet. That'll be the top link in the description below. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I will catch you next week.